sculpture's not usually up, but it's a great Hessa. It's sort of wonderfully awful. What do you mean by wonderfully awful? Well, she's so pushing boundaries in so many important ways. I think in order to really appreciate Hessa, it's really important to understand what her friends, what the avant-garde was doing at this moment. She was hanging around with people like Ad Reinhardt, with a whole series of artists that were involved in a kind of high conceptualism, where there was an attempt to create a kind of perfection in the physical world that represented a kind of ideal. A kind of was, purity. A kind of purity that was incredibly cerebral, it was incredibly geometric, and one has the sense when you look at that kind of work that anything that anybody could make, that Ed Reinhardt could make, for instance, would be just sort of a platonic shadow of the truth that uh-huh. he was after. Well, leave it to a woman to bring us something down and dirty. Then. Well, I think she did that really consciously. Uh-huh. I, think I don't she, doubt she, it. she was a very conscious feminist in that sense. It's early for sort of that phase of feminism, but, mm-hmm. but I think she was very aware of the implications of her making something by hand that was based in this old secondary tradition of handicraft mm-hmm. that women had been saddled with. And so she's wrapped a uh, thin rope around this, this semicircular arcing. form that's hung by itself, really, right? nails on the wall. It's actually a beautiful and kind of um, swooping line that's created there. <laughs> but the first impression you have when you look at this, because it's this dark brown and it's got this sort of waxy kind of buildup, it's just incredibly organic and incredibly handmade, and it feels like it's of the body. It feels very bodily. It's, I mean, you Could think it, about the connotations here. What does it remind? It out yes, or, it's it's uh, it's scatological. Yeah. It's intestines. It's menstrual. It's even. menstrual, or it could even be phallic, right? Or phallic, or breasts. Or it even could be food. Down. It could be sausage, right? Mm-hmm. And so you've got this really uncomfortable kind of interaction between bodily functions that we don't like to have mesh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We don't like to see these things together. But there's a kind of incredible ambiguity. And actually, if you just think about how the human body has been represented historically, this is a pretty radical way of dealing with the human body and and the way in which we think about ourselves, right? If this is food, if it's excrement, if it's our own bodies represented Mm -hmm. all together somehow, I mean, that's a pretty intense series of associations. That's true. But it's something that I feel like feminism is going to take up and really run with. They will. And I think Hesse is rightly seen as one of the most important artists that so many people then later respond to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't imagine Kiki Smith's work, for instance, Mm -hmm. without Eva Hesse. In There's also kind of a primitivism here. It because looks it's like, handmade? It just looks like a fetish object yes. in an African culture. It really kind does. Kind of weapon or something like that, too. Oh, so this seems, because of its materiality, because of its sort of oldness and its handmadeness, it feels like it could be in an ethnographic museum. That actually plays directly into what we were talking about a moment ago in terms of the self-conscious secondariness, which is embedded in this, because we always think of that as not fine art, right? Right. And so is she very self-consciously putting herself forward, not as an artist in the highest order. It's really in opposition mm-hmm. to what her friends were doing, what, what was happening in the art world. Mm-hmm. She's great. She's cool.